It's No Excuses episode number 12. I have to tell you last week, last week I had a, I had a meeting with the devil, if I can say. And by me saying this, meaning I, I got very sick. I got the COVID virus and I literally was unable to function. But this is not what we're going to be talking about today, ladies, because we bring it on every week. We're meeting here every week and we wanted to bring the fire. We wanted to bring the purpose, the mission, a lot of good stuff. So you can really bust out your journal today, take some notes, because this is all about vibrancy and having enthusiastic and good life. So we got to bring it on today. Even if I might not be 100% today, but I'm showing up today for you because I wanted to deliver another amazing session. So first of all, I want to um, say my gratitude and feeling thankful for all you showing up, for you taking your time and watching this video, either it's now or later. It's absolutely amazing when you guys spend a good time on some good stuff, right? instead of just scrolling through Instagram, through Facebook, and mindlessly uh, really um, not doing anything about your life. So uh, my appreciation to you for taking the time. I see Larissa has joined. So today, different than normal, because I decided that today I'm just going to go live. I am not going on Zoom. We're just meeting here. So make sure that you actually participating writing down questions, maybe your answers, because this is going to be, again, a work. That's what I want. I want you to think through this session. So even though I might tell you a story, this story can correlate somehow with you, but most importantly, I want you to think. Hi, Ita. Uh, thank you for joining in. So uh, today, today's topic is all about how the lost days hurt you more than the successful days help you. And today I'm going to take you back to exactly, uh, it will be 10 years uh, this year, 10 years this year in June, uh, to, to the time when I had two of my C-sections, hernia repair surgery, and I was never in such a good shape as I am right now, right? So today, I, this, this episode will take you back and you might find yourself in a situation like this right now, maybe similar, maybe different. This, this episode might cause you to think, okay, I've been postponing and stopping and, 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 and putting my life on hold because of so many reasons in my life. And I should never done this, right? So let's start. Let's go back to our basics. What is the No Excuses Ladies Weekly Meeting? What is this all about? This is all. This is this this page I created. This network for all of you ladies out there who are looking to find the No Excuses way of life. Because I've been trying to live my life this way for many many years right now. I've done a damn good job and now I want to share it with you. I want to show you what really means the no excuses way of life. What does this encounter? It, we're talking about health and wellness and nutrition, family, partnership in all these different areas of our lives. When if you're not going to be careful, if you're not going to really pay attention, and be fully vibrant and joyful, enthusiastic, positive, it's going to creep onto you and you're going to find yourself making so many excuses and not living the life that you're supposed to be living. So my goal is for you to always realize, you know what, I've been doing this, now it's the time to do this. Let's not make the excuses because when you stop making the excuses, your life becomes so different and so amazingly good and that's what I want to show you that life with no excuses is a happy life and don't we all want to have that we all want to have that that joyful and that happy life fulfilled by what our mission is on this planet right 
So that's that's the bottom line. That's what we all want. So that's my goal is to deliver for you, right? And again, make sure that you have something to write something down. I'm sure you're gonna get some good points today, like always. We're gonna have some work to do. I will ask you some questions at the end and I want you to really be honest and answer. So let's start throughout obviously the session. I have to drink a lot of water because this monster of COVID almost literally was trying to take my life away and I did not give up because I have a mission. I have a purpose. I have something that I need to share with you. So let's go back. Hey, so about 10 years ago when I got pregnant with Tyson, Tyson was born in June. Uh, he's come, it's coming to a 10 year anniversary. So when, uh, when Tyson was born, he wasn't born in natural delivery, right? This was a C-section. So uh, when he was born, I knew it that the recovery time will take about four to six weeks. This is by book. This is when the doctor might tell you, you know, you're going to have a clearance about six weeks. But you never know how you're going to recover. Uh, and and my my point is that I was never I was not fit all my life. I was always exercising because I was always a coach. But uh, the 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 parts of my life were divided by section. Even by just taking the moments when I got pregnant, I couldn't really. I was working out with Tyson. I was keeping it healthy, eating healthy until the last moment. I was training right. But when I I got the, uh, the um, I, I, when I found out at the, the hospital that this is gonna be a C-section, I knew that this is going to be longer than I thought. And I did not know what to expect. And let me tell you, at that point, I, I did not know much. I had to do my own research. I had to learn on my own skin. I was my own guinea pig to find out what I can do and how I can get myself back into being a coach, coaching people, being able to train. Because let me tell you, when they cut through seven layers of your skin, this surgery becomes so invasive and so, uh, so um, tough that a lot of people don't realize that, oh, it's just a C-section. This is more than just a C-section. Seven layers being cut. For a, about a year, I was not able to do one flutter kick. I was I was struggling myself through the through this time. So what I wanted to show you today is that even though the life brought me such an unexpected event of having a C-section, I did not give up. My fault was that every single day, one, every decision that I make, it's going to lead me eventually to the good outcome. So whatever you do right now, maybe you are in a situation like this, that something is stopping you from become healthier, from going to the next step. Remember that you, you can change today but creating an action, meaning I will become healthy. I will make sure that I'm going to work out. I will make sure that I'm going to be eating right. And we're going to go over this in detail. But what I wanted to tell you is that um, the body after having a C-section was so broken apart that I almost knew it deep inside of me, that this is going to be a very long recovery. But this didn't scare me internally. This did not stop me from going forward because a lot of times the fears of uh, not being, not getting this immediate response, immediate gratification, mm -hmm. immediate, immediate feeling good stops you from achieving your next level. What I knew it is to show up to do my diligent work, to find out what I can do to make myself just a little better. I couldn't do a half of the exercises that I used to do, but this not even once occurred in my head 
that I will never be able to do them. I knew it deep inside that by me showing up every single day, by me doing the diligent work, by me doing a little bit every single day that my good habit, that my good decision making will lead me eventually to the good outcome. Remember that those series of these small events, of these small victories, eventually give you the outcome of a good habit. That's what it is. Not the instant quick uh, gratification of feeling good, right? And that's what I did. And I have to tell you, the doctors would never tell me, uh, they, they, were in, they, they couldn't answer me the question, how soon I'm going to recover. I just knew it that this is a, a, a road trip. I'm taking a road trip and I'm taking myself as the guinea pig on the way to discovery, what's going to happen? Because I knew it one thing. That even though I wasn't, I wasn't, I was only certified quick certification, I did not know deep uh, insights of how I can train to get when I used to be. So today, whatever you are and whatever is in your life that it's absolutely stopping you from becoming healthier, and we're going to do that work. You got to pause and stop for a second and really ask yourself the question, what am I doing today that's stopping me? Why am I not progressing? Why am I not pushing forward? Because this was just one element. This was just a one element of, um, of with the C-section. Then came uh, almost three years later, I had a, I got pregnant with Ivanka and the same thing happened. This time the doctor convinced me of doing the C-section based on how the body responded in the first place. Now what I've realized through all these months training and becoming better, I've realized that during this time I developed, I had a severe hernia, all right? So I already had a split muscle in my, uh, in my main midsection where the abdominals are. And I knew it when I'm gonna, when I get pregnant and I got pregnant with Ivanka, that the second part is gonna be so severe, she's gonna pretty much rip me apart through the pregnancy because there was nothing left. And I still obviously go through the whole pregnancy. I decide for on the C-section. So I, I have a double hernia. There is absolutely no connections in the muscle anymore. There is a hole that the intestines are poking through and she is born, right? So now I'm facing a second, uh, second part of recovering from the C-section. I already knew it how I was how I was dealing with the first one, but I never dealt with a split muscle opening, right? The diastasis recti, that was severe. So I had to do my own research again and find out what I can do, what I cannot do on top of the fact that I couldn't do certain things because of the C-section. And ladies, I want to tell you that uh, you we are capable of doing amazing things. Human being, human body, human mind is capable of doing such amazing things that our mind a lot of times don't go there because you might even scare yourself of these thoughts. As incredible as the human body is, giving birth, shrinking, and being able to lift itself up through the exercise, through training, through good nutrition, and becoming that powerful ball after, it's not a miracle. It's consistent work. So today I want to tell you that no matter where you are, some of you may be dealt with this already. Some of you never will, but something in your life, caused you to stop instead of going forward with a little small consistent repeated habits that eventually 
will give you a great outcome. Because habits will give you all these different outcomes. Remember, the good, the bad, a lot of times you're not going to get a result instantly. But think about it. If you're going to do good, if you're going to have a good habit on your plate, repeat it repeatedly. If you repeat them, if you're consistent about them, they're going to give you great outcome. On the other hand, if you have bad habits that you consistently repeat, what's going to happen to you? You're going to end it up being in a hole. You might be with your health, with your wellness, with your nutrition. That's how people gain tremendous amount of weight by repeating over and over <coughs> the bad habits. So let this video be a picture of things that no matter how things happen in our life, unexpected, you got to go back to your core values. You got to really deep, 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 dig deep, deep and find out, okay, what is that that is so valuable for me? What is that that is so important for me? And in all our lives, I always say this, and we always say this here, it's the health and wellness. It's the good nutrition, right? Showing up through all these months and I have to tell you, I have people telling me because the kids would sleep uh, and I would drag them. I would come to the gym and do my workout. Even I knew it that I cannot be and do such an intense workout. I would do just a little bit, just, just a little bit. So that a little bit eventually will become a little bit more and I will get the results that I was looking for. And people would tell me, why are you dragging the kids? And I realized that they are little, that they will sleep. I have to use this time when I can. And I was not worried about disturbing the sleeping pattern because when the kids is, are little, they will sleep no matter what. They will sleep anywhere and everywhere. And I know when I speak and I talk and I coach clients on a daily basis, I hear this a lot of times and all the time that these excuses that are coming out, like, you know, my kids, I, I, can, I don't have time, or my kids are sleeping, or I cannot do that, or my husband is not helping me. All these excuses that women make throughout, uh, throughout the career, you can say, you know, either, either is giving birth to the children or when the kids are young, finding, it's almost like women looking for these excuses so they can grab on them, hold on to them, so they're not going to scale. And if you grab and hold on to the negative part, like if you don't have time, if you don't have space, uh, you know, the kids are too little, you start worrying too, my, too much, you're going to convince yourself to this. Let me tell you, when I coach clients, and I hear so many times, women, people in general, find out these excuses and they convince themselves that they are true, that, that there's an ultimate truth, but it's not. Because when we start digging deep a little bit more and asking questions, they've realized that they just made up these almost like lies to comfort themselves, to give them some cushioning, to make them a step away from what the path is giving them for for from for for them to procrastinate for them to not take the action because a lot of times it's all about snapping the fingers and saying i am doing this i am taking action but what people do a lot of times don't get wrong doing an action for just being busy because somebody might say, I will start this next week. In the meantime, they're just being busy doing nothing. And what happens is they fooling themselves on convincing themselves that they're doing some work. In the meantime, there is no work done. 
but they thinking, oh, okay, I, I, I am on the way to, to, to my health and I'm going to start exercising this week. And in the meantime, they didn't do anything. So those are very important things like setting up actual action and doing this stuff. So I tell you, there were days that I did not feel like it, that I was tired, that I didn't sleep enough. Um, with having two young kids, one was born, the other one was barely three years old, I still would grab them, put them in the car, grab the car seat, and no matter what, I still showed up. And the message is for you, that you need to show up even if you don't feel like it. Because in order for you to change your life, to change the level of your wellness, your nutrition, whatever is stopping you from going to the next level is for you to not believing when you don't really feel like that divides people from the ones that win and the one then they lose the one that really continuously growing and the ones that are always showing up that's what it is you see i'm not feeling my best today I could have said, well, I don't have my guest, which uh, we were talking about less two weeks ago, right? That I'm going to have a guest person and, <coughs> excuse me, she will be here with us, but not this week, hopefully next week. Uh, for me, not feeling 100%, I could have said I'm not going to show up because, and I decided no, no matter what, I will show up because by me showing up, actually delivering to you, giving you some ideas, making you think, not only I will feel better because I have a purpose, I have a reason. Because last week was just awful. When mm -hmm. I couldn't function, when I couldn't control what I would normally would control. Because the sickness overpower your mind and overpower your any willingness to fight. This thing paralyzes you. That's what it is. It's just like a 21st century nasty freaking monster that is not only on physical level, but on the mental. That's what it is. And I could not wait for me to show up and say, I will do that. How soon I can get better? And I did. It took me longer, longer than I thought. I am not 100% uh, fine yet. It's going to take some time. But I am here with you to tell you that whatever, let's do some work. And we're going to go into like the questions because I really wanted to make sure that you, you guys, you, you ladies have the questions down and you really think this through. So <clears throat> think about on the scale one to ten how is your health right now health nutrition one being poor and ten being phenomenal ten being awesome write this down this is important now if you got a ten you should congratulate yourself on a damn good job or doing a damn good job or showing up training eating right being the diligent, always focused. But the good thing is that there is more than level 10, my friends. There is always another level. Some people think, oh, I look the best, but there is always another level. That's what's interesting. Now, if you've got the number one, it's not about dwelling and digging yourself into the hole and punishing yourself and saying you this and you this. Obviously, that's not the point. If you will treat yourself like this with disrespect and not um, helping you and understand you to feel better, you will. how can you get out of a hole like this, right? The only way that you can feel better is to say, you know what, I am honest about this. I have not been doing good, but enough is enough. I can put on some work and I need to take action as of today. And being honest is the first step to changing something in your life. So you should congratulate yourself too for being honest because 
the worst thing when I coach my clients, when I speak to women, when I speak to people, when they are not honest with themselves and people are not honest all around. And if you're not honest, how can you progress? How can you change something in your life if you're not honest about it? If you're not looking in the mirror and say, you got yourself into a big trouble by eating bad. You got yourself into a big trouble by not exercising. You got yourself into a big trouble by smoking and not taking care of yourself. And those are statements that have to happen if you are not doing good. Because the mirror will tell you everything. I'm fitting clothes will tell you anything. Not getting up in the morning, sleeping in, going to sleep, binging on Netflix, binging on bad food will tell you the same. So it's good to be honest today. It's still the early in the year when we can change certain things. So number three. What are the things that you want to improve immediately, today, like right now? And you can't just write health. You can't just be so, uh, that, that blurry vision of health. You need to be specific. I need to lose this and this amount of weight. I need to start exercising. I need to start eating healthy my nutrition is poor you need to write those down today right now that's why i said we're gonna have some work to do you're supposed to be answering those questions be very specific number four what excuses thought sentences have you been telling yourself over the course of weeks, months, years. This is very important. Common excuse is I don't have time. How does this sound? I've been and write it down for the past 20 years. I've been making excuse that I don't have time. Let me tell you, when I get you on the phone and we go hour by hour, what do you do? I'm going to find so many empty spots that you're not going to even believe that you've been wasting. Did you know that average person scrolls two hours through Instagram? That's, that's 600 hours over the course of the year, isn't it? Two hours every day. Do you log this in to your daily calendar? Do you write it down that you spent two hours on your phone? No, you didn't. And people tell me <clears throat> that they don't have time to exercise. We focus on things that are wrong to us. We focus on things that are absolutely should not take even a part of your daily life. And common mistake and common excuse is I don't have time. We will find the time. I will find the time within the seconds for you. You're going to be surprised that we found an hour of a daily workout routine for you. And this can all happen ASAP, just like this. That's what I do. Because I've done it with so many clients, with so many people over the course of 20 years coaching people that People just waste their time. So this has to change, my friends, today. That's why I ask you. What about some people will say, I don't, um, I don't have money. I don't have money to exercise. But in the meantime, they go twice a month to get their nails done and spend $120. They go every week to straighten their hair that they spend 30 to $40. That's $200 a month. They will go and spend consist constantly on social media buying stuff they don't even need. This is a common thing. 
we're gonna find the money if you're gonna start looking at the things that you've been spending money on and of course you're never gonna have money if you're gonna always gonna say i am broke stop saying that you're broke you're gonna find the money that's what it is that's what it takes to say i have the money for nutrition i have the money for exercise as little as $97 a month peak physique offers program. So this is all possible for as little as 97. That's like the cheapest plan available. And this plan got me in shape when I was after two C-sections with my children and a hernia repair surgery, guys. So many of you ask me, you... You've been doing this for so long. You, you look so good. But I just showed you today that year, think about it, year on being pregnant, year on recovery, year on another pregnancy, year on recovery, hernia repair surgery, another year. That's five years out of my life that has been taken. Five years. When I was in an, into extreme workout regimen, extreme level of training, and had to start all over again. Did I give up? Did I stop? Did I cry? No, because I knew it, that this is going to happen. I have a self-belief that I will do that, even though I did not know much about recovery after C-section and Fixing hernia repair surgery when I was cut from the sternum all the way down. This was this scar. Right now it's this big. Your body has amazing shrinking capabilities. Yes. You just need to put some work on and some good nutrition. So what is it today? What is it? What excuses? I wanted to hear from you guys. What excuses have you been making for the most recent years and weeks? Why are you not in shape? Simple. The nutrition is bad. There is no workouts. There is no plan in place. That's what we need to change. Number five. Well, number five, we 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 telling this uh, how many weeks we and months we've been telling in years to ourselves. Number six, what steps do I need to take to stop this cycle? So now you know it that you've been doing all these bad things. Maybe you've been eating poorly and so bad. What is the first thing of knocking down the bad habit? Refer to the habit section and a habit um, episode when I was talking a lot about habits. But just today, so I can give you a quick um, recap. In order for you to break the habit, bad habit, it has to be not accessible for you. So if your food is the problem, you need to wrap up all the bad stuff from your pantry, from your house, donate throw it out it's not it should not be at your household number one and don't tell me that your kids eating bad stuff because a lot of moms will tell me oh my kids need the snacks well you know what change that they no longer gonna be eating pretzels just change to healthy things they shouldn't be eating that many pretzels either way because now you're creating bad habits on them wrap up all the things throw it out that's number one you need to cause a friction with bad habits. You need to be, uh, meaning nothing is easy for you to get to this bad habit. If you're going to create this, you're going to have less chances of doing this. By friction, what I mean, you're not going to drive to the store and get bad, you know, get ice cream in the middle of the night if you don't have them. That's friction, right? That's creating friction. That's putting obstacles on the way. That's one of the things how you can get rid of a bad habit. When the bad, when the bad habit is difficult to get it, to do it, it becomes less a 
accessible. It's not there for you anymore, right? So think about it. What are the things? And then we start replacing with the good things. It's work, but it absolutely can be done. I've done it with so many people. I've done it with so many people. Um, number seven, what are, am I willing to give up to get there? What are you willing to give up to get to your final destination? If your goal is health, if your goal is nutrition, maybe starting up a business. There are things that we need to give up, right? There are things that we need to give up in order to get somewhere. So what will be the sacrifice? Some of you will be coming from home, uh, home from work, and you're going to decide that this is the time for you to work out. That's the only time. So maybe used to, you would come home and watch your favorite show on TV. Maybe that's what's going to be your give up, given up uh, thing. And you know what you can do? You can reward yourself with watching once you're going to do your workout. System of rewards would work really great too. I will reward myself for watching what I really wanted to after when I complete that workout. Maybe something different. Number eight, set up triggers on your phone. I just recently gave this to one of my clients. We were talking about um, things, how, she, how, how you really want to show up into this world. And triggers are awesome to have it on your phone. You can set it up of different things. You can say, you can write it down, be mindful. Uh, be uh, more approachable, be more focused, um, eat better, whatever the triggers is for you, something that you wanted to see it. In her case was she always let other people run the show for her, meaning run her day. Always someone calls her and asks her to do a favor and she can never accomplish anything in life. So for her it would have been setting up triggers that this is my life, I am responsible, I need to do things for myself, not constantly running and doing things for others. Because then you're just running, spinning in circles and it's always somebody else, somebody else's agenda. Guys, that's the same like working on your dreams. Either you're going to work on your dreams and you're going to start creating your things or someone else will hire you to do theirs. Which one do you want? What, can I read it later? I just got that. I just got something beautiful. Look. I had to make a call for my home. Oh, sweet stuff. So, those are very important things, guys. Triggers are awesome. They can help you throughout the day. Maybe you need a trigger of energy. I am feeling amazing. I feel energized. I feel vibrant. I feel good. Maybe that's what you want on your phone. Maybe you have to set up a trigger on the way home so you're not going to actually escape your workout. Stop being a little bitch. Come home and work out, right? Stop escaping things that you need to do. Remember, we are all badasses here. This is all about accessing the badass mindset. Now, number nine, announce to your family and friends that you will be getting in shape. This is very, very important to announce it because a lot of times you guys secretly think, oh, okay, I'm just not going to show it. I'm just not going to share it. Some of you are doing this because you are afraid that people will judge you. People will tell you things. Well, come with the acknowledgement that people might say things, but they're not going to bother you. You're just going to share it. You're just going to say it. Or people that are very uh, critical, don't share it with them. Pick and choose the people that you want to share the information with. Number 10. The good habit of taking care of yourself must be consistent, might be easy, easy accessible. There should be no friction. Start with 30 minutes of whatever there is, eventually becomes such a habit that you will no longer live without it. That's how it is. 
And that's what we do. That's what I do on a daily basis. There's different packages available. Remember, 101 coaching is available, but it's not about me training you. The platform is the design. You join the platform, you work out, but we getting on a call once a week or once a month to change your mindset. This is a private coaching. You need to respond to me. There are AM and PM work being done. Not a lot, but there is work done, and that's how we're going to get you into a next level mindset. And that's what most people do need need it's not even about the workouts the workouts will be delivered on the plate for you it's all about that mindset that you have a trouble with because let me tell you no program of 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 no program will work for you ever if your mindset if you're not gonna do that work on yourself first before you're gonna hit some kind of a program that will change your life forever. Mindset is first, then can go a program and changing your external body. Hi Maria, changing your physical appearance. That's a second. The first is always mindset. That's what I do. I coach people around the world. So please send me a message if you need one-on-one coaching of your mindset, your physical, uh, mind body business we say it it's a peak performance academy and uh, we do one call a week or m weekly weekly call or monthly call based on really what you're looking for and all these programs are available right now uh, just you need to text 201-925-1860 can get you set up as soon as possible and again all these 10 questions that I posted write it down write it down because this is important this is a breakthrough moment this is something that will help you to find out what you've been doing all this time what kind of excuses got into your head that you've been really holding on to for so long and it stopped you from growing because remember anytime excuses arrive they will stop you from growth and growth is what we have all all of us on this planet this is something that we should all live for not avoid not escape not hide our our head in the sand we should be proudly expecting obstacles proudly expecting difficulties and say you know what i will figure it out i will do it and i will work on it and i will make the next step and i will do my best that's the whole idea guys so again thank you so much for joining the no excuses i hope i delivered some good contacts for you and we will see you next week and hopefully our guest will be here this is gonna be amazing we're gonna go live and then once she's gonna start a session we have to go only on zoom due to a specific uh, thing of this event so stay tuned if you want some information make sure that you're gonna post here most of you getting the information weekly if you're not getting my emails please send a message with your email and i'm gonna add you to the to the group and you're gonna get a recap from every single week again thank you so much for joining me again i will talk to you guys soon no excuses